Hello guys and welcome to another tutorial video. So this time we're going to look at a custom fence tutorial. So something that I've used quite a lot, especially in my Whipsnade recreation, I'm doing an awful lot because there's not many fences that look like the ones we've got in the game. Um, and it's something that can really help with your realism and things. So I thought I would do it um, a tutorial because a lot of people seem to think that maybe it's a bit more complex or it's than their abilities or they don't really know where to start and things like that um, and it's not actually too hard once you get started and once you kind of know what you're doing so I thought I'd do a fairly simple tutorial just on how to do some custom fencing so firstly you're going to want to plan out your actual barriers so you may have a habitat in mind where you think actually I don't really want to use this barrier, I want to use something else um, and you want to make a custom one or you might just want to randomly plot something out just as a rough guide you don't have to do this um, but if you have an idea of what you want then it can be easier depending on what you're trying to build so um, we will place some barrier down so the easiest way to do it is if you have it on 2 metre or 4 metre length because they're easier ones to build for because a lot of the game pieces are obviously in 2 metre and 4 metre pieces so it can be easier to do it in that sort of length so if we just make a random bit of fencing down like that all 4 metres um, the one thing you might have an issue is uh, when you join the end piece up so if you're having a complete circle all custom fencing um, once you get to here you might think oh actually there's a bit there that's six meters or five meters or whatever so you might have to fiddle about there to make it line up properly once you come to placing that last custom piece down but in general if you do it like that you um, you should be pretty good to go so next I normally find it easier to build with a wall piece so this next step will be actually making your panel so one single panel of your custom fence so yeah I normally find it easier to place a wall piece down to build off of because um, what you can do then is use the position snap and position snap rotation to make sure everything's going to line up properly um, which I just think makes things a, a lot easier to be honest so, um, if we go for, let's say, a 2 meter decorative square, so we'll say that the fence is going to be 2 meters high, so we'll plonk that one down, we'll make sure our angle snaps on, and rotate it up, and then we'll position it where we'd like it to be, so in line with that, the edge of the, the wall piece there, pretty much, and then drag it down to where it meets the floor. So in between that, let's say we want some metal pieces. Um, so we will use these small metal rods, let's say. Um, or the, we'll, we'll use the square ones, actually. Um, so again, if we make sure position snap to the wall, and then we will twist them around, pull them across till they meet there, um, in, in fact, so they meet around there, so you you don't want it obviously sticking out there, um, but you don't want it hanging too far off the edge there, it doesn't matter if it overhangs a little bit, but not too much, um, so yeah, if we say, once it's in there, we can position it however we want, so let's say we just want four of these, um, one at the bottom, and then We'll say it like that. Obviously, you can make sure things are all perfectly lined up and evenly spaced and all that if you wish, or if you don't mind things being a little bit off, you can just go straight into it. But I normally try and make things up, things that are nicely evenly spaced and things like that. But it's not necessary, um, to be honest, um, depending on how picky you want to be. So we'll make them all a nice metallic -y looking colour, a nice silvery colour. So, once you've got your piece, you want to leave one side of the vertical off. So your fence panel will be one side vertical 
and anything horizontal you've got. So once you've done that, you can delete your wall panel from the group, exit there, and then you'll have one panel that you can move around and, and do stuff with however you wish. So you can move it into position, obviously you can move, use the, um, the X to actually properly move it around, rotate it, all that sort of thing. Um, or if you are not following a very strict kind of um, pattern here or a strict kind of layout, then you can just use use M and then use D. So you can uh, control D to duplicate and then just use the Z button to rotate it roughly to where you want and place things like that. So do the same again down here. So once that's done, all the way along, you can then delete your actual barriers because you don't need them anymore. So you can uh, you can delete these guys, and then you've got your barrier. Um, you can potentially, depending on the fence type you're using, you might actually want barriers as a part of your fence. Um, that is a possible. So once you've placed all your pieces you'll want to be more careful about where you're placing them if you're actually using barriers so you might actually want mesh as part of this barrier so you might want to lower it down just enough so that it peaks through there and then you'll want to probably have it positioned right in there so that it's going right the way through the middle and then you can edit edit that all the way along and make sure everything's perfectly lined up there and then you've got your mesh as part of your barrier so that's another another useful way to combine the two pieces but yeah it's completely up to you whether you want to just delete everything and have purely custom or whether you want a mixture of custom and barriers as at the same time in the same uh, the same fence line so once you've done that, you'll basically just want to go around and tidy things up. So there's a few little bits that you might need to do do stuff tidying up wise. So things like this, as I just said, things where you you want to make sure your fence panel's right in the middle, so it all blends in properly. You might have certain points. So where I said that you're you've done your loop and say this is your last panel and it's actually a little bit longer you might just want to move that along and then copy these ones across to meet them and you'll probably get this annoying thing where it doesn't actually come across perfectly how you want but you can just pull them straight back in so you may end up with one long panel one extra long panel or you could potentially, if you wish, copy that one and have two smaller panels. It's up to you. Um, you might also want like gates and things like that in there, um, especially places like this where you have uh, kind of uneven gaps there. It might be a good place where you think, oh, I could put a fence here or I'd put a gate here, sorry. So um, you might want to make a little custom gate or something that kind of matches the style roughly. Um, but it has the excuse that it could be a little bit too small or a little bit too big that sort of thing um, so yeah that is a few little bits that you might need to just touch up once you've finished um, any any of these fences they can be as weird and wacky as you like really um, obviously there's certain pieces that sort of lend themselves more to being fences but you could make fences out of anything really um, as long as you follow the same kind of technique then you should be fine to, uh, to have whatever weird fences you would like to have so the other thing I just wanted to cover quickly is to do with this so when you have changes in terrain and making your fences custom fences look right so obviously when you use barriers depending on what setting you've got obviously your um, if you keep that one the undulating your fences will automatically follow the right kind of style there whereas 
If you're using custom fencing, obviously you need to do that yourself. So for your uneven terrain, there's obviously more complex ways that you have to make your custom fencing go up and down and follow, follow different um, terrain elevations and things. So a good way to do this is to use the barriers first. So if you say you want, let's just use the steel mesh again. So if your habitat is going to come up here, obviously you've got your um, length set to your the height, uh, sorry, the length of your panels that you've already got. Um, make sure your undulating is ticked, so you know that your, as it says here, post lengths remain constant above ground level, which is going to be useful for you. Um, then you can plot your actual route that your part, the your fence is going to take, like so. And this is going to give you a good way of knowing um, the angles that you're going to need to let your custom fencing follow the right path. So we'll duplicate this over again and we'll rotate so we'll pop that in again I'm not being I'm not going to be super precise on all my uh, my placing of things um, but at least roughly correct so we'll make sure it's kind of right there because it goes in a little bit so we'll duplicate all these along so that they're roughly correct. So with these ones, when they're in the middle of the, uh, the, the ground, what you're going to want to do is pull them up so that they're just right, sat nicely in the ground there. So we will do the same again for that one. Duplicate this one. And we will place it just in the ground and rotate it so that it's roughly correct like that. So now we've got that, what we can do is actually edit these so that they are the correct angle because um, some people will rotate their whole fence post, uh, fence panel sorry, so some people you'll see potentially will just do that and have that sort of stuck in there and then pull these out to, to kind of match where they want to line up there but personally I don't think it looks as good um, I prefer it when it actually follows the angles of the sort of terrain itself so obviously this one's nice and flat but this one we need to change and then that one we need to change so we'll edit this post uh, this piece sorry now sometimes you it will, will be annoying when it's on a fence as I'm sure most of us know um, so when it's on here it depends on the point of rotation sometimes so some of these pieces their point of rotation is right on the end and some of them are in the middle but what you want to do is line up so that the your piece that you're using your custom piece matches the the level of the or the angle sorry of the barrier piece because that should be the right angle and then once you know that it does you want to make sure that with your flat piece and where you know all your points are where your fence post um, and your horizontal bits meet you want to join them up match them up properly so should be a, about there roughly where these two should line up and then make sure that this piece goes into both sides properly so that's looking pretty good and then we will do the same for this um, realistically you only need one of these because what we're going to do is duplicate them so we can get rid of all these other ones for now um, as long as you've you've got a straight piece somewhere that you can attach it to that you can like line up with then you're right to straight away delete things if you don't um, say for example you, you didn't have that piece there then you might want to keep these and then when we go to copy these you can copy them and then delete the horizontal ones so you know 
that they're meeting in the right place. Um, but we will uh, we will keep going for now. I accidentally deleted too many of these, didn't I? So we'll edit this one. We'll bring it up, and we will make it the right kind of angle again. So this is a bit more fiddly when you've got pieces that rotate in the middle because you have to kind of judge them a bit more by eye but using this technique of following this it's um, a bit easier. Um, you can also do it by eye if you don't use this. You can kind of, you can either line it up along the floor um, where your, your second piece meets. So if you had a post here you can just kind of roughly judge it by eye where the two should meet up. Um, you can judge it on the terrain itself or yeah you can just do it by eye but this this one is a fairly decent way of getting the um, the angle at least right and then again we'll pull it down to where we want them to meet approximately there pretty much um, and then we'll pull that across so once you've done that, obviously this is just a small little hill, but if you have quite a long hill, you can do this with all your pieces. Um, again, we'll delete these ones now that I've made sure that's correct. And then I find it easiest then to merge all your fences into one. So previously they are all separate groups, now they're one. So we can then take both of them and control X, make sure that you're going to go straight down you potentially you'll need to shift it to um, world axis but it shouldn't make much of a difference for vertical up and down stuff and um, it's more for moving around and um, but up and down should be fine so then once you've got all your all your pieces that are angled selected you can then just copy down so that again these ones meet at the right place so out there and copy them again and copy them again so about there so you might have issues like this where you've got a big bit sticking out I personally would probably just delete that one because it doesn't really need to be in there um, and then you've got your your appropriate um, heights and uh, angles so if you want to copy that one over um, we would probably want to just pop that one in there too Roughly make sure it lines up when you do it I'm sure you will and then you can delete your barriers and there you have your custom fence so maybe little bits that you might need to touch up like that does actually look like it's a little bit too high, so maybe want it there more. Um, and then, um, yeah, there, there possibly will be little bits that maybe you've missed where they don't quite meet the posts. But in general, that is pretty much that is pretty much how I do it, and that's worked quite well for me. Um, definitely, just doing one of these all the way along, selecting everything and grouping it, and then just. Um, copying them the whole lot down and then down and then down maybe even putting them all in their, their own separate group sometimes um, helps as well because you can just you know that if you accidentally click off it if, especially if you've got a big fence with a lot of angles then you know that you're going to be able to copy it straight down easier than if you then have to go around selecting all of them again um, so yeah I think that pretty much covers everything um, if you did have any other questions or anything then feel free to leave a comment and I will try and answer them. Um, you could also join the Discord and ask any questions in there. So I have a Discord set up where I post obviously things about my videos and people can post their own stuff, um, any, any creations, any questions, anything like that. Um, and I'm also doing, started doing a vote for Planet Zookeeper so people who are in the Discord can vote for which topic they would like me to cover next in Planet Zookeeper 
So, um, yeah, if, if you're interested, then the link will be in the description. You can join in there. It'd be nice to have you in there. If you like this video, hopefully it was useful um, and proves to you that it can be uh, can be easier maybe than you think to make your own custom fences and things. And I know it adds to piece count, which might be an issue for some people, maybe not as much for others, but it can be really useful and make things look a bit bit more realistic and maybe a bit more interesting than just using normal barriers and some of the Planet Zoo fences that come set in the game. Um, so yeah, hopefully you enjoyed and found it useful. If you did then please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already to the channel. I'll be posting random other tutorials as and when I think of something that might be useful and if you have any suggestions then leave them in the comments below as well. Um, check out my other series as well um, other videos on the channel and things and I have got a twitch as well where I do live streams every now and then as well so if you're interested in that then check that one out so all the all the links and everything are it will be in the description below so thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one so one other thing that I forgot to add was that I do actually have a custom fences pack or custom fences and gates pack on the workshop and there's obviously quite a lot of other good stuff on the workshop as well from other people that have made custom fences and things so if you are interested in custom fences but you're not really sure how to make them still in terms of designs things like that um, then if you check that out I'll pop a link in the description as well um, this is a picture of, of the stuff that's in it. It's all stuff from my Whipsnade Zoo recreation that I've added into a pack. All gates and fences that I've used that are custom for other people to use as well. So yeah, if you're interested and would like to use some pre-made custom fences, then check that one out and subscribe to that on the Steam Workshop and have a look at all the other cool stuff on there. Um, you can obviously apply all the same principles of how you use them just skipping out the whole design stage and you already have a ready-made panel that you can use for your enclosures and public barriers and things like that so yeah check that one out as well and have a look at all the cool stuff on the workshop